Shalom. I am Rabbi Nathan David Abbott, speaking to you on behalf of webyeshiva.org. I'm going to talk to you in these few minutes about a little bit of the Parsha of this week. First of all, I hope that everybody, despite all the difficulties that we are uh, facing, uh, have had a uh, wonderful Pesach and are able to enjoy the freedom despite being locked down in many places. This Parsha, Parsha Tazria, talks about uh, a number of things, one of which I think can give us a moral lesson that we can learn from this pandemic of COVID-19. Let me preface this by saying that I am not one of those people who try to attribute any calamity or difficulty in life whether it's personal or internationally or communally to a particular reason that God is doing this. I don't know why God does anything. And I, I recognize that I don't know, and I'm not entitled to know. And nobody can really understand why bad things happen uh, to individuals, to communities, to the world. But in this week's Torah portion, there's a discussion of a plague which is referred to as leprosy. And the Hebrew word for plague is nega. And the Torah, I believe the only time, gives a specific reason for that uh, nega of leprosy. And that reason happens to be Lashon Hara. Lashon Hara speaking about other people, tail-bearing, slandering. This Torah that I'm going to give you from the Nativot Shalom perhaps will give us a basis to, on an individual level, turn our sorrows and our difficulties into happiness. The Nativot Shalom says as follows. He quotes the opening sentence that refers to Tsaras. He says, Zos tia Torah ha-Matzorah. This is the law of the Matzorah. The Matzorah is the person who has Tsaras, which is incorrectly translated as leprosy. It's a disease that we don't know uh, today, but leprosy is the common translation, even though it's wrong. He says, the, the sages teach us, Torahso shall motzi shemra. This is the Torah of the person who says bad things. And he says, call him a saper lashon hara nagoim boin Allah. Everybody who says lashon hara speaks about others, plagues come upon him. It's plague of leprosy specifically. Now, that doesn't mean that there's a direct relationship. And I, pointed out in my initial comments, direct relationship. But what the Torah is telling us is the importance of, of staying away from Lashon Hora in terms of trying to improve our moral standing between man and our fellow man and between man and God. The, the Tivot Shalom goes on to, to point out, he says that anybody who speaks Lashon Hora is like somebody who's denying the existence of God. Why is that? Because we know that God has chosen the Jewish people and humanity as a whole to be his children. And if you are speaking ill about somebody's children, about God's children specifically, God doesn't like that. So it's like you're denying God. And he compares, and Tebow Shalom compares somebody who speaks lush and hara to a snake. Uh, a snake slithers around the ground and will bite somebody, not for food like any other animal, but because he likes to do damage. The snake likes to bite, no reason. And the person who says lush and hara gains nothing from it, yet it causes damage. Now, 
what is the remedy for this? Uh, at the end of this Nativo Shalom, he brings the, the Zohar, which says that Shabbos, observance of the Sabbath, is the way to, to repair this malady of Lashon Hora, of, of idle gossip. And he says, Man de manhig b'shabasa es hapech le oneg. The Hebrew word for plague, nega, if you turn the letters around, it's oneg. Oneg meaning joy and happiness. Now, how can we, how can we turn this sorrow into happiness? Well, I would submit based on the, uh, what I've just said, based on what the Zohar said and the Tebow Chalm said, that we know that, that God treats us mida connected mida. He rewards us for what we do in the same manner that we do it. And that concept, we know that Lashon Hara is bad for us. So what's the opposite of Lashon Hara? The opposite of Lashon Hara is saying good things about people, praising people, not engaging in Lashon Hara. You know, the, the failure to do a sin is considered a mitzvah. So I would submit that if we fine tune ourselves, and instead of looking for people to blame, looking to various governmental agencies, various members of the governments, whether it be in America, in Israel, anywhere else in the world, and blaming them, try to look at the positive. Because if we can start looking at the positive, we will then be able to turn, at least at a personal level and a psychological level, the nega into oneg, be able to find, find joy. And we see, as a matter of fact, many, many indications of people coming together, people loving one another. There is so much beauty that's coming out of this sorrow and this distress. You see it all the time from the, the volunteers uh, who moved out of their communities, left their families to go and help out in New York where they needed more doctors, more nurses, to people helping one another with food, with delivering packages and so on. People are recognizing, uh, maybe for the first time in a long time, that we're not alone in this world. No man is an island. They were all together. As Jews, we know that call Yisrael, arevim zelazeh. Every Jew is responsible for the other Jew. And I submit to you that every human being is responsible for every other human being. And we see now that this particular plague that we're going through doesn't discriminate. It doesn't discriminate as to who it affects. It affects everybody across the world, regardless of the nation, regardless of their religion, their nationality, their sex, it doesn't matter. It affects everybody. It's universal. So to, uh, to counter that, we have to counter with universal love. Universal love and positivity will go a long way towards helping us get over this, this pandemic. In fact, if you can be positive in the midst of difficulties, it's gonna make the difficulties a lot easier to bear. And if you're positive, even if God forbid you get sick, the power of positive thinking and prayer is not to be underestimated. Anyway, my wish to all of us is that we exercise our newly, newly found freedom from Passover to turn this whole situation from a nega to an oneg, to find the joy that is always present in our life, depending, depending on the circumstances. I thank everybody for listening on behalf of the thewebyeshiva.org. I wish everybody a wonderful Shabbat. I wish those who are ill to have a refuah shalema. And I wish that nobody else get infected by this dread disease. And that we have a world where even after this disease is over, which hopefully will be soon, we will still understand how important it is to be together as Jews and as human beings. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.